Welcome to Living Waters Bible Study, and we are going to finish chapter 1 of Romans today. Uh, we are going to briefly go through verses 19 through 32. We'll kind of recap verse 18 because it is essential to our understanding of what Paul is getting across here about the state of mankind. So let's go back over verse 18, our pivotal scripture, where Paul changes from his greetings to talk about salvation and righteousness. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. And we talked about this a little bit last time. To hold the truth means to suppress the truth. How do men do this? Because they are living wicked lives while they still understand who God is, they are suppressing the truth by their actions. The wrath of God is not the selfish human idea of wrath where I'm so vengeful and angry and I'm going to get back at you. We have to remember that God is sovereign and he is higher than that and doesn't stoop to that type of petty behavior. What we're talking about is a sovereign God who judges the universe in righteousness. He is the God of the universe. He is omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere at the same time. He's omniscient, meaning he knows all things, including the thoughts and intents of the heart. And he is all powerful. So when God looks at a situation and judges or makes a judgment on it, it is knowing all things past, present, and future, and understanding the intents and the thoughts of the heart. Let's face it, the whole human race deserves the wrath of God. But he sent his son that we could be saved from the wrath he would naturally have toward us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Every truth revealed to man by God has been fought against, disregarded, and deliberately obscured and purposely many times suppressed. And so this is what brings God's wrath on mankind because they understand who God is and reject the light that he has given them about himself. Let's start reading verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them or to them. For God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Let's look back at verse 19. God said that it was manifest to them. It was made known to both Greeks and Jews who both studied the divine, both had some understanding of the divine, and God has manifest himself to mankind through nature, through the sky, uh, through uh, what they see around them. He has made it known unto them. It says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, though we cannot touch God. We cannot see him. We see the effects of his divine wisdom and design and power being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, we go back, if we look at the word Godhead, this is um, showing here that God is more 
than just a single entity. He is three and one. And when we look at the term Godhead in the scripture, we know that the word Trinity is not used, but the concept of God being God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is throughout the scripture. So the scripture says they are without excuse because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain or empty in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So God is, is talking about man, both Gentile and Jew, and their thirst for knowledge, their un their desire to seek God is is the answer is all around them but by their profession of being uh, the epitome maybe of academics and learning and studying sciences and philosophy and all of these things yet God is right in front of them and professing themselves to be wise they have become foolish Verse 23, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So let's go back and look at this word in the first clause changed that is the Greek word alasso meaning to exchange one thing for another so what Paul is trying to show us that they changed or exchanged what they understood about God and decided to make an image to something lower the creature so they would rather serve the creature they would rather serve uh, these images and icons rather than the invisible God who is all-powerful and all-knowing so when we get down to verse 24 it says wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves now when we take a closer look at verse 24 this is very important these this word here for um, gave them up it is one Greek word and that word I hope I pronounce it right is paradinami and it means to give up it means to give into the hands of another or to deliver one to the custody of another and this is a word of the form of that word is used uh, quite a bit in the Gospels uh, in the New Testament if someone was given over to a jailer uh, it, it was used in Matthew to describe Jesus being given over to the Pharisees so the idea is to be given over to the power of someone or something else so wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness uh, through the lust of their own hearts now uncleanness has to do with immorality physical immorality It's a noun a noun a feminine noun uh, and it means a physical impurity or a lust or some type of immorality and usually when we see the word uncleanness as an old world uh, translation but when we see it in the scripture it is usually talking about the sexual uh, aspect of immorality verse 26 for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use 
and to that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. In verses 26 through 28, Paul is giving a specific example of the previous scripture. What does God mean by giving over to uncleanness? And he says, here's an example. Once again, he uses the Greek word uh, paradinami. I hope I'm not butchering that too badly. Give them up to vile affections or desires. Notice it's followed by a colon meaning what is coming after is listing examples and details of what has been discussed before. How does God give them up? By withdrawing any restraints. Some people may think, well, that's great. God will let me do whatever I want. But in scripture, that is not a good thing to have no restraint. Now this passage, though it's controversial, is very self-explanatory. Uh, it is said that the great evangelist Charles Spurgeon, when he would get to this passage of scripture, would tell people to just go home and read it uh, because the sensibilities of the audience, he, he didn't want to read this immorality of the ancient world uh, out aloud. He thought it a little bit too raw, but today we're used to this. so. Um, that's just a little history there. What does he mean the natural use? We saw this thought earlier in verse 24 when Paul talked about dishonoring their body. The concept here is that my body, which God made, was created to do certain things and function certain ways, and they were using their body without restraint in ways that dishonored the purpose for which it was created just for their own pleasure. Whether we go further, before we go further, it's important to note that uh, during this time, there was a large mixture of sex and religion. That was pretty prominent. You could go to temples and get involved in orgies and other sex acts uh, that involved idol worship. And promiscuity was just mixed with temple worship at the time and the Roman readers would have been very familiar with all of this. So this is uh, self-explanatory here. Um, Paul says in verse 27, likewise also, uh, the, let's, let's go back a little further, uh, for this cause gave, God gave them up to vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet or which was fit. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Now, a reprobate mind, what does that mean? Um, that's a very interesting term. It talks about a mind that doesn't work like it ought to. Uh, it, there is where it doesn't work right or is depraved. And you can find this meaning in all the translations of the word reprobate. And uh, it doesn't have to take the form that it does in verses 26 and 27. But reprobate is used to talk of also about uh, the spiritual condition where people are uh, spiritually, their mind is, is off. And this, although this is one example of it, uh, reprobate is, is used at other times in the scripture also uh, to denote that somebody is not 
thinking properly. They're not thinking uh, the way they ought to think. So in, in verse uh, 28, we see that God says that he gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient or not proper. And believe it or not, I know we live in an age where uh, there is no right or wrong, no proper or improper, whatever you feel like doing, you should do. But that's not really what the scripture seems to teach. Um, it is saying that some things are proper and some things are improper. So we get down to verse 29. Let's read that. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So we're going through this home stretch of chapter one uh, and Paul is giving a list of what has happened to mankind uh, how the human race uh, has gone headlong into sin and he is giving just specific examples of the sinfulness of man So in these last few passages of scripture, Paul is giving a listing here, examples of sin. And you may know some people in your church that are doing some of these things, but I'm going to go through uh, a definition, a list of definitions. I'm not going to try and define every word, but we're just going to go through these definitions because many of them are old world definitions and may not be so clear to the modern reader uh, you can use your amplified bible which really gives good explanations of these verses uh, these descriptions here so god talks about um, fornication and uh, you would not believe that uh, many people today don't even understand uh, what the word fornication is uh, that is sex before you are married and God is against that wickedness so it's a general term meaning evil purposes or desires on the inside covetousness which is greed maliciousness um, this is uh, just trying to injure other people that includes gossip or actions that I know would cause harm that is malicious and God listed in these lists it in these sins uh, full of envy I don't want other people to have anything everything has to be mine murder um, not only physical murder but you can assassinate or murder someone's character as well any type of harm to other people debate uh, some people just like it. It's not. It's not talking here about you know. I, I want to de debate debate uh, about uh, Republican versus Democrat or, or have a, It's not talking about that. Uh, it's talking about the very spirit of strife and quarreling and contention. Uh, some people will argue with the stop sign. Um, it just debate. Just want to argue deceit uh, to deceive someone uh, malignity that's just a general term talking about bad character um, you, you ever heard the term the, the the bad seed or having a depraved heart 
um, being crafty and malicious. Uh, some people just have that type of character and um, God listed here. Uh, whisperers. I'm not talking about the horse whisperer or the ghost whisperer, but when when it's talking about whispering, secret slander or tearing one another down secretly or saying damaging things about one another in private. That's what God means by whispering and backbiting is also a similar meaning. Haters of God. That's pretty explanatory. Self despiteful proud boasters and, and let me just say about pride uh, and we know the scripture says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall pride means to put yourself above one another uh, to think of others as lower than yourself that doesn't mean I I can't be uh, proud of my child for getting an A or or that type of thing uh, when it says proud and, and boasters um, so that is not talking about the uh, the normal pride that you would feel uh, at an accomplishment but that is talking about elevating yourself uh, above above others self pride so um, here we have inventors of evil things and so that is um, basically dealing with uh, plans to do evil. Some people are really smart in how they do wicked things. Um, they will um, be really smart, find ways to rob people of money and, and other evil things. So um, God calls creators of evil things disobedient to parents that's pretty self-explanatory God is not happy when we're not compliant uh, with our parents implacable I will not be satisfied and I will not make peace um, this is talking about people that refuse to be satisfied merciless uh, harsh without mercy um, uh, covenant breakers it also talks about uh, natural affection without natural affection people can be unloving and uh, harsh so God as we get down to verse 32 he says who knowing the judgment of God and this is this is the whole problem here uh, it's not what we don't know it's what we do know and this is what Paul is condemning here who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death It's talking about spiritual separation uh, from God and we'll see throughout the scripture when God talks about death it's talking about a spiritual separation from God we were dead in our sins and now we are alive to God uh, and, and certainly some of these things in the Old Testament they would have been put to death um, but Paul is dealing with spiritual uh, separation from God not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them So as we move to verses 18 and 32 just to recap uh, this this section of scripture shows the condition of mankind and his position with God uh, the whole human race Paul is showing is guilty before God because they see all around them who God is and God has revealed himself in nature and that is enough to condemn human beings um, so remember Paul is showing that mankind is worthy of God's wrath and as we move into Romans the second chapter he will further prove his point uh, about this as he begins to show the remedy for the wickedness of man and why every man woman and child who has come into this world although he's guilty before God um, can remove that guilt through the saving power of Jesus Christ 
So I thank you for being with us again today at Living Waters Bible Study. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today at Living Waters Bible Study. Don't forget, read your Bible and pray every day and you will grow. If you have any questions, you can email me at grsem7 at gmail.com. God bless you is my prayer.